Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habitifillah. Question was asked. Assalamu alaikum brother. Thank you for the response earlier from my other question. I ask Allah to have mercy upon us both and unite us upon the sunnah. Inshallah maybe we can meet in this life and the next. My question is now regarding the issue, uh, the, the excuse of ignorance in regards to grave worship. Some ulama I read have said that even if a Muslim commits such shirk, and in some cases they may be excused for ignorance of the deen, but some ulama have said that this is not something in which the excuse of ignorance can be applied to. And then they go on to say, I asked about this issue due to family, friends, and maternal aunts, which have been unfortunately influenced by this. I have much worry for them and a lot of other Muslim brothers who unfortunately have fell into this, and I try to advise them, may Allah reward you for your time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi, riskin tayyib, wa'ilm al-muttaqabbil. A good way to uh, benefit from this issue is looking at what Imam uh, Bin Baz said regarding this because it's very relevant uh, to the situation and it will give you a uh, and give us clarity with dealing with the practice and the implementation of what you need to do uh, with your family uh, aside from the issue of uh, bijahil or excuse of ignorance this is a big mess and we talked about it prior uh, and as you mentioned, that the scholars of Ahlus Sunnah do differ with regards to uh, some of these messiah of when someone is excused and some are not excused with ignorance. Some scholars uh, from Ahlus Sunnah take the position that the person, when the, for anything that uh, is major, uh, the major kofar or, or, or shirk is not excused by ignorance. And others say, no, there's other details with regards to this, and I think the majority of opinion, majority opinion, as we mentioned prior, is uh, the second view that there is excuse uh, of ignorance for uh, even the major shirk, uh, depending on the circumstances. Again, there's a lot of tafsil, it's a big major issue, uh, and there's a lot of evidence for it. So we're not going to deal so much with that issue as we have done in the past, and you can find this uh, many from... Many of the scholars, some of the translated books, especially in issues of dealing with uh, the nullifiers of Islam, the nullifiers of faith. faith. But listen to this uh, question that was asked of Bin Baz and his answer, and that will give us an idea about how you should approach this issue. Because again, we're looking how to solve this issue or, or how you can deal with and implement this in your life, not necessarily with the mas'ala ilmiya, as we, we talked about before. Uh, so Bin Baz was asked, "Hal aladina yastaghithuna bil qabur yurkhuluna fi man attakhadu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbab min duni Allah, wa hal yuqatilun ala dalik?" So the questioner said, uh, "Those people who uh, basically they have their hope and their uh, worship uh, of graves, the grave worshippers." Uh, do they enter in the ayat about taking the their priest and their rabbis uh, as lords other than Allah? And should they be fought based upon that? And again, that's an issue talking about the issue of jihad. When you talk about fighting about this, this isn't for random people to go, but this has to do with, uh, you know, uh, the spread of Islam and what mu Muslim governments, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to the issue of the jama'ah and jihad and things like this. So those are other masail. But this is what he was asked, and here's his answer. He said, Nam. He said, yes. He said, Hadha min hadha al-bad. He said, this is from this uh, the same issue. Ubad al-Bedawi, Ubad al-Hussein, Ubad, wa Ubad Sheikh Abdul Qadr, who men have a bad? So he said. He said yes, that the worshippers of uh, Sayyid Bedouin and the worshippers of Hussein and the worshippers of Abdul Qadir, meaning Abdul Qadir Jailani, uh, it, it, it it has it fits under the same issue. He said, "Whom men men atakhda ila ma Allah? They are from the ones who take gods other than Allah." Meaning this is shirk al-akbar. This is the major shirk because they're 
they're asking them, they're supplicating to them and seeking uh, refuge in them uh, instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, then he said, he said, because this negates the statement of la ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship except the law. And it negates it. It makes ibtal of it. It, it totally negates it uh, with this wicked action, this wicked act, this wicked deed, this wicked action of, of worship, meaning to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshiping these inhabitants of the grave who couldn't even stop their own death. And he said, Nasallah al Afia. He says, La yuqatiluna, yubayin lohum, yad'una ilallahi, wa yuwadih lohum al haq, bi enna amalihim kufr wa dalal, bel, hadim in a'vam al kufr ala di la khilafihi. So it's very important. He says, do not, so you don't fight them. Because again, that's the duty, this is the duty of the, uh, you know, when it comes to jihad and governments and so on and so forth. And the jama'at al-Muslimin. He says, so you don't fight them. He said, but clarify for them. Uh, and call them to Allah. And clarify it, the truth for them. Because their their actions, you know, their action of worship is disbelief and misguidance. Rather, it is one of the greatest types of disbelief, a'dham al-kufr, which there is no disagreement upon ahl al-ilm about it. So there's no disagreement upon ahl al-ilm, ahl al-sunnati wal jama'ah, that this is kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam to supplicate to other than Allah, to you know, worship, any, direct any uh, worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, sarihan, you know, the, without any, uh, uh, that, that is very clear that you are directly worshiping, uh, you know, shirk al-akbar, worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no disagreement between ahl al-ilm about that issue. He said, walakin la yuqatiluna. However, you don't fight them. Wala tastahil. دماؤهم وأموالهم حتى يبين لهم من باب إقامة الحجة. This is imperative and this is very relevant for you. He says, and their their blood is not lawful and their wealth is not lawful until it has been clarified for them from the issue of إقامة الحجة, meaning to establish the evidence uh, to someone. He says, Yubayan Lum al Haq. The truth should be clarified to them. And if they continue upon it, then of course, then they the and the hujja has been established. You know, you've given them proof and you've, you know, taken time with this and given them evidence and clarifying for them. They understand the evidence, they understand. They don't have any doubt about the evidence. You've given it clear to them from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. This is my ta'liqat. This is my statements to, to clarify what the Imam is saying. That it's been totally clarified for them. Uh, they should not be fought. Now, this was the case in jihad. Now, now we want to look at your mas'ala. You're talking about family members who uh, are uh, committing major shirk, kufra and shirk. How do you deal with that? If you deal with the people who, and this is in the Bab Jihad, and this is what Muhammad ibn the Wahhab, rahimahullah, and before him, the ulama, this is what they were upon, that they, uh, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, really uh, intricately detailed this in the Masail al-Takfir, in declaring someone to be a disbeliever, and when they go outside the fold of Islam, that all the issues require, which is a condition for takfir al-ma'ayin, of, of talking about a specific individual. For example, this is Mr. Pencil. Mr. Pencil has done some major acts of disbelief. Do I, and, and Mr. Pencil was known to be a Muslim or, you know, has taken the shahada and we know them, him or her to be a Muslim, a practicing Muslim, whatever. And they've also 
fallen into or what have you uh, into supplicating to the grave. So now grave worship, this is an act of Kufr al-Akbar which takes you out of Islam. How do we deal with that? We, as, as so now we're talking about a specific individual, takfir. So we first, takfir al-mutlaq uh, 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 is the general takfir when you make takfir of, you know, you say, for example, whoever does this act of worship, whoever worships graves is not a Muslim, okay, is a disbeliever. That is takfir mutlaq. That's a general takfir, meaning whoever falls into that thing, in general, they are a disbeliever. That's the hukum. Then when it comes to applying it to an individual, this is from Ahl al this is from Ahl sunnah unlike Ahl takfir The takfiris don't, mostly don't uh, get into these types of tafsir. So Ahl sunnah they, when they comes to making takfir on a specific individual, and this would be Mr. Pencil here for doing this uh, supplicating to the dead or what have you, this is called takfir al-ma'ayyan. And one of the conditions from the conditions of takfir is that uh, that you must aqama alayya al hujjah that you must establish the proof to Mr. Pencil. Pencil. Mr. Pencil, so I sit down with Mr. Pencil, I say, hey, listen, grave worship is, is impermissible. And that's, pro that's probably not going to be enough to say, hey, that's disbelief and it takes you out of the fold of Islam. I'm going to need some ayat. I'm going to need, you know, so we come with the ayat that we mentioned. And we come with the many ayat and the evidences. Mr. Pencil, this is disbelief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described this as the characteristics of the disbelievers. They disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is shirk al-akbar, takes you out of the fold of Islam. Mr. Pencil, here's a hadith, a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which shows. So now I've been trying with Mr. Pencil. Now there is no necessarily a time limit. Some people they understand it that all you have to do is present this evidence, but no, that's not correct. It doesn't it doesn't go with uh, the intellect? It doesn't go with the nasus. It doesn't go with the text al aql wa naql. So some people will say you just need to read an ayat. And if they continue on, they're disbelievers. This is more those people who are inclined towards takfir. Because they will say that even reading an ayat, even if it's in Arabic language, that the English speaker, the Japanese speaker, should under should now cease to stop that. No. Of course, part of iqamatul hujjah is faham al hujjah That's another aspect of it. Meaning that the individual understands what you're presenting to them. How can you really establish a proof? How do you really establish a proof, uh, except that the person understands what you're talking about, okay? So that is a whole nother issue. So the point being, as far as your issue, that you should be patient, you should continue doing what you're doing, you should gather the evidences, and you should present it in a gentle and nice way, and show that them that this is so serious what they're doing, that this takes... Them out of this is an act of disbelief. Just present it. It's an act of disbelief. This is kufr akbar. It takes you out of the fold of Islam. Ya ammi, ya ammati. You know my my aunt, my uncle. You know this takes you out of the fold of Islam. Do not do this. Direct it to Allah. You don't need to pray to the grave. The grave cannot do anything for you. They did not help themselves. So you can use you can use use also intellectual arguments as well as the nasus. To keep going and keep working with them until they die or until you die. So we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.